โมทัสสะปะโวะโทอะระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะโนมทัสสะปะโวะโทอะระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะโนมทัสสะปะโวะโทอะระหะโทสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะทิราวาระพุทธิสมซีรีส์ธรรมทัพนัมเบอร์72 powerful dependence condition อุปนิสัยปิจิโรอุปนิสัย combines two words one is upa meaning powerful or strong n i t s i a means dependence upa n i t s i a powerful dependence p i c h e o Is a condition or a cause. So, upanishad p i s i o n means powerful dependence condition. Before we proceed, I would like to refresh on the types of consciousness. We have learned in the past talks. There are twelve unwholesome consciousness, twenty-one wholesome consciousness, and out of that. Twenty-one, seventeen are mundane, and the four are supramundane, Lokya and Lokutra, and then there are thirty-six resultant consciousness, v i p a k a j a t a And twenty functional consciousness, k r i y a c i t a Altogether, twelve plus twenty-one plus thirty-six plus twenty is eighty-nine. Eighty-nine types of consciousness. Also, what we need to know is. This resultant and functional consciousness combined are also called as indeterminate, a b y a g a t a Indeterminate, a b y a g a t a Resultant is indeterminate. Functional is indeterminate. Also, twenty-eight materiality rupa are indeterminate, and nibbana is indeterminate. These we should keep in our mind fresh, so that we can follow the talks quite easily. There are nine points under this powerful dependence condition. Three are related to wholesome, kusala. 
trees are unwholesome, akusala, and the remaining trees are indeterminate, adhyakata, wholesome states or wholesome dharma, unwholesome states, unwholesome dharma, indeterminate states or indeterminate dharma. In Pali, it used the word Dharma. And we try to insert English word states. So in here, states and Dharma means the same. Hosan Dharma is faultless and produced beneficial result. It is faultless and blameless during acts of generosity, morality, or mental development. Try and find fault in a charitable cases, moral observant, and the mental development, you won't find one. Afterwards too, and up to the life that once attained Nibbana, these wholesome acts mix and produce good benefits. It not just simply one time you did and then one result came in and finished. No. They keep producing life after life in a various way. Unwholesome Dharma Akusala is full of faults while arising and also produce lousy or bad results. Action such like such action likes killing, stealing, lying and so on are blameless and faulty. Sorry, are blameable and faulty. After that action, it gives right to harmful and undesirable consequences or result. And in serious cases, they keep manifesting undesirable consequences till to the last life of attaining Nibbana. Even the Buddha faces some of those consequences. Serious one, of course, in his last life. In determinate states, neither produce good or bad result in the future. In determinate dharma, does not produce any vipaka result anymore. Wholesome unwholesome resultant and resultant functional consciousness. All those are constantly arising in us. In us means putujana.
So keep that in mind. All these dharma we are talking are not out of the wall. It is happening right here, right now, in our self, in our psyche, all the time, one or the other. If you view that way, this topic will become more profound. You have more interest in it. arising in the Puduchana and also in the three lower areas Sotapana, first dream winner, Sakadagami, once returner, Anagami, non returner. They still have these consciousness arises. It's just a difference in time of intensity and the quantity of certain types or the other. Twenty functional consciousness arises only in arahants. So I am laying the groundwork. What are the consciousness? What types of consciousness? What groups, wholesome, unwholesome, indeterminate? And then what it means by wholesome, unwholesome, and indeterminate. We need to know these things quite fresh so that we can easily follow the following topics. I won't be re-explaining them again and again. <coughs> now, this powerful dependence, Upanichya, Ichiyo, has three subdivisions. One is predominant objects, powerful dependence, condition. They have seven, oh sorry, eight points under that. And another one is Seamless Anandara, seamless, powerful condition. Seven points in that category. And the third is independent or separate. In Pali, it's called Pakadupa. Translated as independent group or separate group. Independent, powerful dependence condition. So there are three this subdivision based on their different function. One functions with the very predominant object. Another function in a seamless way. And the third one is totally independent. You will come to see later what independent means. So three subdivision. Now we are going to doubt these nine points. one by one. The first one is, in the book it's written as, preceding wholesome states are related to succeeding wholesome states. 
by powerful dependent condition. Simple, straightforward. Wholesome dharma that happens ahead is related to the wholesome dharma that follow right away. And in there, it is through the focus of powerful dependence condition. The succeeding one depends on the preceding one. And the preceding one powerfully makes or produce the succeeding one. That's what it means in essence. So in here, statement is quite simple. But what are these succeeding, preceding, and so on? Let's see what are the preceding wholesome states. Basically, we are all talking about consciousness. So it is wholesome consciousness. Preceding state, preceding dharma, and here means referring to wholesome consciousness. And we know there are 21 wholesome consciousness whose logic that and in there excluding rahata mega jaita rahata part consciousness if you exclude that, 20 left, 20 wholesome state. Those 20 are preceding wholesome states. But it excludes Arhata Path Consciousness. Because once one's attained the Arhata part consciousness it only produce pala part and fruition it only produce pala and pala fruition is indeterminate neither wholesome or unwholesome because of that we cannot include this arahata mega jeta in the preceding group therefore here only 20 wholesome jeta excluding arahata part consciousness represent here and these 20s are related to succeeding wholesome states by powerful dependence condition. The arising of the following states strongly, powerfully depend on the succeeding state. Or the preceding states make the succeeding state even more powerful, stronger, and take it away. Now, succeeding wholesome dharma. 
It includes all the 21 wholesome consciousness. And the preceding is 20, succeeding is 21. Why? Because, let's, call, let's say a Nagami person, once returner, is practicing. Practicing what? Practicing Vipassana. To attain Arahata Medha, to become Arahant. So, once a return of person is practicing Vipassana, which is the wholesome state, and that produces Rahata part consciousness. So, Rahata part consciousness is the result and wholesome produce wholesome because of this arhata mega is a part of the succeeding wholesome states just trying to expand a little bit more so that we understand what is preceding state and succeeding states means and what they are included. So that's a point one. And point two is, in the book it's written as, preceding wholesome states are related to succeeding unwholesome states. Not immediately by powerful dependent condition, and here translated as not immediately. Gengsinsi and Pali. It can be said that. Some are related by powerful dependence condition and some are not related to powerful dependence condition. They can see in Burmese and can see Burmese pronunciation. But here it put not immediately in the book because they go a little farther and took that situation as a word. You'll find out why. Now, wholesome dharma related to unwholesome dharma. Preceding and succeeding. This wholesome dharma in this point number two refers to 21 wholesome consciousness, excluding part consciousness, four part consciousness. They are all together, 21 kusala jeta, but in this point number two, four Part consciousness are not included in here. What are the full part consciousness? Sotapana, Sakadagami, Anagami, Rahata. Each level of area has their own part consciousness. Those far are, those full are not included. In this point too. So 21 minus 4, 17.
only 17 mundane who are ultra mundane 17 mundane wholesome consciousness can produce unwholesome consciousness and the other four know why what is the function of part consciousness mega jita their main function is to eradicate unwholesome mental state each level eradicate a certain unwholesome state eradicates a certain unwholesome state and in the fourth level all unwholesome are eradicated so as their job is to eradicate they cannot produce unwholesome state for that reason they are not included in this preceding dharma of point number two yeah we should be talking with a white board and black board writing it down it's clearer and easier but i'm trying to do the best i can hopefully you can follow it so 17 mundane wholesome consciousness can produce unwholesome consciousness by object dominant and independent powerful dependence now a little bit more complex we talk right at the beginning there are three types of powerful dependence one is predominant object based another one is seamless based and the third one is independent based but in this point too predominant object and independent only those two can produce unwholesome states but the other one seamless anandara seamless powerful dependence cannot produce unwholesome states immediately immediately means whenever a consci a consciousness arises it goes to the 17 thought moments we teach thought process 17 thought moments when an object strike a sensitivity 17 thought moments or a thought process automatically runs through and in that 17 moments only seven swift consciousness which is the thought moment number 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 only those seven swift consciousness moment jhana can produce wholesome or unwholesome state or dharma or karma others cannot only those seven can produce it and once those swift consciousness produce a wholesome consciousness all the seven automatically run seven wholesome if it is unwholesome 
all servants are unwholesome. They don't have any interchangeability between wholesome and unwholesome between that seven moment. Or, let's say, in a thought process. Wholesome arises. In the middle, you can't stop and change. It runs through the whole thought process. And only at the next thought process, <coughs> it can become unwholesome consciousness. So, under the seamless, powerful dependence, it cannot produce wholesome consciousness immediately. That is, what it mean by in some cases it cannot. So these are the exceptions and that these exceptions are not exception to the rules. They have their own rules governing. That's why we talk about thought movements. We talk about what is Anandara seamless, no gap what is Aramana, object condition, and so on. We have dealt quite a few already. They do their own job, and one cannot conflict with the other. And they are walking like clockwork. So, only in the following thought process can produce unwholesome states. Just to give a very simple example how wholesome produce unwholesome mental states. Let's say a person is making a big charity donation for the monks and the people and the homeless for everybody of course it's a big event he was looking at it he's happy and all the kusala wholesome jetas were arising in him and suddenly in the group the volunteer group he saw that one person is really wasting the food really wasting the food. And at that moment, he felt angry, disappointed. Even though he has a wholesome actions, suddenly, due to a condition, his or her mind become unwholesome. based on predominant object, it's right away, boom. Based on independent, powerful dependence, right away. But when it comes to seamless, it is not right away. It has to pause for a thought movement, a thought process. So that's point number two. Point number three. Preceding wholesome states are related to succeeding indeterminate states by powerful indeterminate dependence condition. Sorry. Powerful dependence condition. I will recite that phrase again from the book. Preceding wholesome states are related to succeeding 
indeterminate states by powerful dependence condition. So, in this point three, how does this consciousness work? Preceding wholesome states of consciousness are all 21 wholesome consciousness. They are the causes or the condition. And the succeeding effects that follows are 36 resultant vipaka jeta and 20 functional kriya jeta. So that is what represent in this point three. Wholesome state is presented by 21 wholesome consciousness and succeeding states are presented by 36 resultant consciousness and 20 functional consciousness. So they don't leave up any consciousness. So it is straightforward and simple. Number three. Point number four is preceding unwholesome states. We have finished the three wholesome. Now we are starting unwholesome. Preceding unwholesome states are related to succeeding unwholesome states by powerful dependence condition. The preceding unwholesome makes states make the succeeding unwholesome state even more powerful and stronger. You can take it that way as well. Here, both preceding and succeeding wholesome states are the 12 unwholesome consciousness. 12 akusala jeta. Greed rooted, anger rooted, and delusion rooted. 12 of them. So it's straightforward to point four. Point number five is preceding unwholesome states are related to succeeding wholesome states. Not immediately by powerful dependence condition. So there's a little twist in this point number five. Preceding 12 unwholesome states are all 12 unwholesome consciousness. They are the causes, they are the condition. And the succeeding 21 wholesome states It causes the 21 wholesome states of consciousness. However, wholesome states cannot seriously focus or depend on the unwholesome state. A good guy cannot depend on the bad guy seriously. To, put, to simplify that. So, wholesome states cannot seriously depend on the cause, which is an unwholesome state. That's one point. Also, wholesome states cannot follow unwholesome state in the same thought process. We have explained that 
previously, so I won't go through again. If the first thought process is unwholesome, they are all unwholesome throughout. Only in the second or the following thought process, it can be wholesome, not immediately. Therefore, object predominant and seamless powerful dominance condition cannot produce succeeding wholesome states. There are two situations or two conditions. Predominant object, Aramana, Aramanupa. And the seamless Sahajata. All these conditions are they are playing like a machine, like a clock, doing their own job, and they don't interfere one with the other. And still can function effectively and efficiently. They might cross, but they know their way around. So, how does unwholesome become wholesome? Simple example is a thief went into a house to steal. There's not much to see, only a small sum of money. But in there, what he saw was a old helpless woman and when he saw that pity comes out and that moment of having a pity or sympathy is wholesome succeeding proceeding is the act of stealing that's how it changes and change that's how it can change from unwholesome to wholesome all based on conditions. That's point number five. Point number six. Preceding unwholesome states are related to succeeding in determinate states by powerful dependence condition. So preceding unwholesome states are Twelve unwholesome consciousness. They are the causes, they are the condition for the succeeding thirty-six resultants. Consciousness, Vipakacheta, and twenty functional consciousness or Kariyacheta. They become the results or effects. Is preceding and succeeding. That's our point number six. With that, we are going to stop today. If it is too long, our attention would not retain. And I will carry on in the next stop as a part two. The remaining part of this, Upad Nisya Vichyo powerful dependence condition. May all of you be able to visualize if you must and experience all these conditions playing around, changing around, moving around in your mind and in your heart. And may you be able to see the, the true nature of consciousness and attain insight as soon as possible. 
sadhu 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 thank you very much <laughs>